All right, guys, very excited to be joined by James Gerritsen, you know him from Tiger King. James, thank you so much for being here. And we saw you a lot on the, you had some epic shots in the docuseries on the jet skis, and you just now came off the water right now. It's fitting. Tell us about your day today. What'd you do? Well, what I did is I've been doing these cameos, the little shout outs, and uh, I've been doing them on a jet ski. So I've been out there all day doing them. Whew, I'm jealous. I gotta tell you, where are you, Florida? I'm in the Florida Keys. Oh, so nice. Um, what's life like been for you since this series came out? Um, well, it hasn't been the same. You know, I usually live a quiet life, you know, I, I play on the water, fish, rent jet skis, things of that nature. And now it's, you know, doing interviews and things. I'm just not used to it. For people that don't necessarily know, how did you first get involved with Joe Exotic? Well, I have exotic animals too. So I've been in the exotic animal industry for around 25 years. I've owned tigers and everything uh, you could pretty much own. So I knew Joe from this industry. And um, I wasn't really good friends with him. We're, we were kind of acquaintance. If we seen each other, we'd say, hey, hello. Uh, I didn't really get involved until, you know, the last three and a half years. Talk to us about that, your decision to decide to work with the feds on Joe's case. I thought about it for a couple weeks and I was like, do I want to get involved in this? And I thought it was a noble thing to do. So I signed up to be a confidential informant. There was kind of a tipping point for you, wasn't there, where you decided, all right, this is what I want to do? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really, I really didn't want to get involved. I mean, like like today, I mean, you know, when I look back, I always, I always second guess myself. I said, you know, I know I saved some animals from dying, but, you know, why did I put myself out there like this? And, um, you know, I just pretty much told myself, I'm going to do it and uh, I'm going to, play by the rules. I'm gonna, um, you know, I'm just gonna basically help them. I, I heard you've been getting death threats. What's the deal with that? Well, you know, you get people, you know, I actually help the government. So, you know, I'm getting people, there's a lot of people that think it's not right to help the government. And, uh, you know, I'm getting all the hate mail, calling me a rat, uh, narc, all this other stuff. And, you know, I just get that every day. I mean, when you get that, do you have any regrets about your decision to help out and to sort of play the role you did in all this? I have no regrets doing what I did. I mean, I, you know, as long as I'm content in my mind, I really don't care what others say. When you go back to that, what was it like testifying against uh, Joe Exotic? Well, obviously, I don't want to put anybody in jail. I mean, I don't want to see anybody in jail. You know, it's, it's not something that I really wanted to do, but it went with it. So it's something that I had to do. Yeah. Do you feel like, uh, I mean, what do you make of, of, of Joe's sentence of his, I, I don't know, just like what he's, I guess, at what he's going through now. He's in prison, uh, how long the sentence was, whether or not he'll get out. What do you, what's your sort of take on all of it? You know, I don't know. I mean, he, he got, I think, 22 years. Um, I think federal time you have to do pretty much the most of it. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, I really don't like putting people, I didn't really like putting them in jail, but you know, um, what got to me is the animal killing. Um, right, talk talk some about that. There are allegations of the animals being abused or there are allegations of animal killing that happened, uh, that Joe participated in. Um, of course, those are allegations, but what's your take on that and, and what do you know about that? Well, what he was doing is, you know, I know one instance he was uh, going to, he had some people bringing in animals to board to basically put them there on their off season. The, the, the people traveled and they only put their tigers there, you know, a certain part of the year. And he didn't have room because, you know, he bred, 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 raised so many cubs, he overloaded himself. He basically had a hoarding problem. And what he did is he went out, went out there and just shot five tigers to make room. He called them up to the fence, put a gun in their ear and shot them. And that's something you, you saw that happen. I didn't physically see it happen, but it did happen. I, I know the people that were around him at the time. Um, he didn't deny shooting them to this day. He says that they had um, health problems and stuff, which wasn't the case, but he did admit to killing them. And, yeah. um, you know, sh putting a shotgun in their ear and shooting them, I mean, that's just, that's not cool in my book. There's so they can call me whatever they want to call me for the rest of my life, but I just, I'm just not cool with that. Yeah, I, uh, there are a lot of allegations surrounding him with, with those types of stories. When it comes to another big part of the docuseries is when that, that facility burnt down that had those alligators in it, in that fire. An arsonist hit our facility and set fire to not only my recording studio, but the studio that houses our alligators. 
What really happened with those alligators in that fire, according to what you know? You know, Joe had it burnt so Carol Baskin wouldn't get her hands on all the tapes. Uh, I guess uh, Mr. Kirkman or Rick Kirkman, the producer that was doing Joe's reality show, had all kinds of tapes of animal abuse and him shooting animals and things of that nature. So I think Joe pretty much said, hey, you know, we need to get rid of all that evidence. And it mysteriously burned real hot, you know. I don't know who did it. I never heard the person. I've heard rumors, but I don't know the person that actually did it. Cardi B, a lot of other people have kind of gone viral online since this series, since Tiger King became this huge hit. Feeling like Joe Exotic was railroaded, that he was framed. Do you hear that a lot? You see a lot of memes about it, things like that on the internet. What's your take on that kind of response? Well, on um, my response to those people is they don't know the deep, dark Joe. They need to speak to people that were around them, that worked for him. Um, they need to, you know, gather up some facts before they try to pardon somebody that did horrible things to animals. Do you feel like the docu series depicted that in a in, in a in an accurate way? That Joe's sort of how Joe treated the animals, things like that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think they. I, if I was a producer, I would have went a little darker into the actual things he did, how he talked to employees, how he treated people, how he treated the animals, um, the fake cancer scares, the car wreck GoFundMe accounts. I would have really got into the full Joe Exotic and not just show a glimpse of what he, what he is. If you had to sum up Joe Exotic in a sentence, what would you say? Evil. Whoa, one word evil that's that's pretty much you know how he talks to people how he talks behind people's backs i mean he's he's not he's not a good guy why do you think carol baskin set him off so much more than anyone else well she did get overly aggressive on suing him you know she sued his mother um you know and she really spending all that money on fighting somebody that doesn't have a million dollars it's it, it was worthless it was probably donated money i don't agree with it i don't think joe will be in a cell alone i think other people are going too i mean they don't know what i'm gonna do i don't think i'm finished in this right. <laughs> how do you feel about the way you were depicted in tiger king i mean to be honest with you i haven't watched the whole show like all seven i've skimmed through it and looked through it you know i i'm fine with whatever they did i mean you know, I, I didn't really know this thing was going to Netflix. You know, the producers and stuff also told us, you know, it was a documentary. They didn't tell us they had already had it sold to Netflix. You know, it was real, the whole thing was kind of underhanded. You know, you mean in terms of the way it was produced and what you were told? Oh yeah, yeah, it was, it was real underhanded. What's next for you? If you look for the future, what, what do you want to be doing in the next few months, next year or so? You know, um, Probably just, you know, being on a jet ski or a boat, you know, being on the water, you know, that's, that's the life I want to live, you know? Yeah. Uh, nothing beats that. Yeah. Well, it sounds amazing. Um, hey, we really appreciate you taking some time for us. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you very much.